Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be showing you how you can configure a LAN port on your Draytech router um, to be configured as the WAN port basically. So what we've got here is um, this is a Vigor 2765 VDSL router so it comes with Wi-Fi 5 um, and we're going to be putting this into a customer site that's got a leased line. Now, when you have a leased line, they always supply a router that you then have to add your own router onto, basically. So um, their router provides you with the public IP address. And um, in, in the instance of this, uh, it comes with a DSL interface that plugs into the phone socket. Okay, so having a look at the machine itself, or the router itself, um, this is a uh, Wi-Fi 5 Vigor 2765 um, VDSL router, basically. So on the back here, um, we're not going to be using the um, USB ports, but you can, with a compatible 4G dongle, have 4G backup on this device. Um, we're not going to be using that today. Um, we've got a standard DSL port here that plugs into your phone line for your VDSL connection. We're not going to be using that either because this is going to be sitting on the end of a leased line. Um, so we've got our ports numbered one to four on the back here. Um, and we're going to be setting our port four to be the WAN connection. Um, but we're not going to plug that in at the moment. So the first thing we want to do is we want to connect um, our PC into LAN port one so that we can access the router itself and do the configuration. Right, so the first thing that we need to do is we need to log on to the interface, which is 192.168.1.1. And this is the uh, what we're presented with. So um, at the moment, we're only going to be logging in with uh, port on port 80, so it's going to moan about encryption, but we'll deal with that later. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to log in with the default credentials, which is admin admin. And once we're logged in, you can see down here um, where it says uh, IPv4 internet access. So WAN1, WAN2 and WAN3. So um, we're going to not be using WAN1. So what we want to do is we want to go into the configuration on this. And we want to disable that. But we want to enable WAN2. And we're not going to be using uh, failover with um, 4G backup. So we're going to disable that as well. And then we're going to say OK to that. So that is enabled and disabled. So let's go into WAN1 just to be sure. So WAN1, you can see it's still saying uh, enable. So we're going to actually go in and force this to say no. I'm going to OK that. And then we've got to reboot the router. Now the reboot takes usually about uh, between sort of 20 seconds to 30 seconds or so, but you'll be able to see on the uh, on the lights on the front of the machine, once all of the LAN lights go out, um, it runs through a sequence of events. Okay, that should be long enough. There we go. And again, we're gonna log in with the default credentials. Okay, so now we can see that um, it's still saying disconnected, which is fine. There's nothing you can do about that. It won't remove it completely. But if we go into WAM1, again, it's saying enable. So we're going to set that to disable. So this is um, PPOE um, and also dynamic and off IPv6. So all of this is set to disable. Again, we're going to OK that just to make sure that it's not doing anything that uh, it shouldn't be doing. And again, we need to reboot. And then once the device is rebooted, it should uh, present us with the login screen eventually. There we go. Okay, so VDSL is completely disabled. Um, the interfaces are disabled. So again, if we go back in here, you can see uh, WAN3 is enabled, so we're going to enable WAN2 again. I'm not sure why that didn't uh, work. So we're going to say OK to that. 
And at this point, what we want to do is we're going to plug in a dummy internet cable. So what we've got is we are just using um, our LAN subnet from our other router. So um, this is on a different um, network and this will quite happily uh, mimic a leased line. So we're going to connect that into interface 4, LAN port 4. And then we're going to go into LAN port 4 and we're going to enable it. And we're going to say... I'm going to call this least line. Active mode is always on. We're going to say that too. We're not going to be using failover here. We're not going to be configuring any um, VLAN tagging. So we're just going to say OK to that. And again, it wants to reboot. Now at this point, you'll notice that the internet light um, that was flashing orange, um, once the system is rebooted, it will flash orange again um, briefly while it's in its reboot cycle, but then that should come up and it should um, it should connect us to the what's called the uh, the least line, which is now um, our other LAN subnet that we're using for internet access. And again, we're going to log back in. Okay, so now we can go into our WAN interface. You can see least line always on. Let's go into the interface here. And it's set physical type is auto negotiation, which is fine. And we're going to go into our internet access now. And we're going to say we're going to set our, um, our access mode. So we want to select static or dynamic IP at the moment. Um, and in fact, we're going to be using that for the least line anyway, but we're going to go in, when we go into our details page, under the static or dynamic IP, we're going to click on enable and we're going to say, obtain an address automatically. PPOE should be disabled, which it is. So we're just going to do that again, obtain an IP automatically. We're going to say OK, and again, it's going to want to reboot. Once that's rebooted, that should now, when it comes back up, it should now come back up and pick up an IP address from our other router. OK, LAN port 4 is enabled, which is our WAN port, and our internet access light is now green and flashing for activity. Now, your internet access light is the second light in from the front on the left next to the power um, indicator and that should be green now and there we go so um, we can see here this is our, uh, our least line um, which is actually um, just a, a LAN IP address from our other router but when we actually go to site this will pick up the WAN IP from our least line router so that's that bit configured. The next thing that we want to do is because this is for a customer site, uh, we know what the IP addressing is and they are using, um, uh, they're not using DHCP basically, that's all being done from the server, but we will do that configuration when we get to site and we need to change the LAN subnet because they're on a dot zero. Um, they're not using anything else. So let's now just walk through the rest of the configuration. Um, we're not going to be using any VLANs or anything, which is fine. We're going to go into the LAN and let's have a look at the LAN setup. As you can see here, 192.168.1.1, that is fine for now. Um, we're not going to be doing any inter-LAN routing because it's standard stuff. And we're going to be switching off our DHCP server, so we can leave that for now. Um, Hotspot web portal, they're not going to be using that. Uh, static routing, they're not going to be using that either. In fact, there's very little they're going to be using on this. We just want to make sure that NAT is set correctly. DMZ host is set to none. Open ports is fine. Port triggering, we want to disable ALG. So it's disabled by default, which is fine, which means that all their voice, uh, voice over IP phones will be working correctly. Hardware acceleration, um, we're going to leave that as enabled and we're not going to, we're not going to touch that basically. Firewall general setup, um, we're going to leave that as default, um, which basically means that um, nothing is allowed inbound, but everything is allowed outbound. 
And again, if you wanted to, to change the filters, you've got the ability there. So as you can see here, net bias is disabled, block immediately, everything else, pass it off to the WAN. Defense, okay, so DOS defense, what do we want to do about DOS defense? So we normally enable it. Um, we enable everything that we need to down here, and we're gonna, we're gonna do that. We're gonna enable absolutely everything because we know from experience that everything works okay. So that means that everything is blocked and spoofing defense, we're gonna leave everything as default. Go back here and we're gonna okay this. That's that enabled. Uh, user management, okay, so general setup, we don't need to change anything in here at all user profile so what we are going to do is we're going to um, we're going to change the password but we're not going to do that now we will change the password uh, when we get to site don't need anything in there csm nothing enabled needed in there bandwidth management we're going to be using any bandwidth management or quality of service because they're on a um, a leased line 100 meg leased line or they will be dynamic dns not required DNS security, nothing is required because that is all taken care of for, by their server. Um, VPN access, we've got one account to configure, but we'll, again, we'll do that on site. This video was purely around how you can enable your WAN port 4. Mesh Wi-Fi, so this is a fairly new feature for these routers um, where you can um, set up a, a, a mesh configuration with uh, additional access points. Again, we're not gonna be using that, but we are going to go in and we're gonna um, change our uh, names and set the security on our 2.4 gigahertz and our five gigahertz um, networks. But again, that will be all be done on site. So the next thing that we want to do is we wanna go in and have a look to see if there is an upgrade available. So we're on 4.4.0 and the latest version is 4.4.0. So let's just see. Okay, so we don't need to change that at all because we're on the latest version of firmware. Check the date and time. So we'll inquire the time. That is set correctly. Use the internet time, which is fine. We're actually going to change that and make that UK. and management so what we're going to do is we want to enable um, the management so that it always um, logs in or, or it always goes in on https we're going to disable tls version 1.0 and 1.1 we're going to disable access point management no, we're going to leave that because we may well be adding a Draytech access point. So we're going to say OK to that. And again, one final reboot. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back in and we're going to set this so that it automatically redirects to HTTPS when you get the, uh, the interface page. OK. So we're going to go into the maintenance and we're going to go back to management and we're going to... LAN access setup. So here's the tick box. Um, so management from the LAN, we want to enforce HTTP access. We're going to disable FTP server and the Telnet server. And that is pretty much it. IPv6, we are not going to enable that to um, access it via the internet. IPv4, again, we're not going to enable that to access it via the internet. So it's just the LAN access to enforce HTTPS access. I'm going to OK that. OK, so that is disconnected us. Now, if we try and go in, it automatically forces us to HTTPS. Now, it's just using a self-signed certificate, so that is why you're getting an, uh, um, you're getting a, a, a certificate error. But that is fine. It's still encrypted, so that is not an issue. Next thing we're going to do is we want to go into the administrator password under system maintenance. And we're going to add in our old password, which was admin. And we're going to add in our new password. Which 
which is strong. And that's it, so we can OK that. And that's our password changed. Panel control. OK. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to um, disable our factory reset so that the users cannot factory reset this device. And we're going to leave um, wireless so that they can enable it or disable it. Actually, no, we're going to switch that off because this device is not going to be performing. Um, it might be performing Wi-Fi, but we're going to disable that button anyway. And the reason for that is that means that um, the system is all controlled from the interface. We're going to OK that. There we go. Now we're just going to go back to LED. We're going to leave that. Uh, the buttons are disabled. USB, we're going to disable those ports. I'm going to OK that. And then the LAN ports, one, two, and three, and they're all part of the same VLAN, so um, we're only going to be using one of them, but that is a gigabit interface, um, so it should be plenty of throughput for their requirements. And that's it, that's all there is to it. So you can see now that um, everything is ready to go, basically. So that's how you go about configuring the fourth port of your LAN ports to be uh, a WAN port. As you can see, it's still gigabit throughput here. Um, they're both one gig connections. So your connection between this router and the router that's gonna be doing the least line will be gigabit and be using a gigabit connection to the LAN as well. So let's have a final look at the device itself. So you can see here that we've got our LAN connection coming in um, to LAN port 1 and then we've got our WAN connection um, coming in which is on LAN port 4. The buttons are disabled so the USB ports are disabled, the reset button is disabled, the um, Wi-Fi switch on and switch off is disabled so all that's left that we need, now need to do is to take this to site and um, do the final configuration of the Wi-Fi names and the um, that's it, they're just the Wi-Fi names actually, and change the LAN subnet as well. So you might ask us why we're going through all of the pain process to configure this router up this way. Well, it's because they need to do uh, VPN access for a couple of users that um, log into their um, server on site. So that's how you go about configuring up the LAN port as a WAN port and disabling obviously the DSL port um, and we've been through all of the configuration we need to do to make the router secure. So if you found that video useful, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just wanna say thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.